Thank you, Honorable Chairman. I think you uh, did a great start to it. So what I feel is somehow or other when we are talking about standards, uh, there is a lot of confusion. I mean, the good thing about standards is there are so many of them. That itself could be a big problem. So I'll skip the obvious slide because I think here everyone is aware of this. But this is one figure which I feel could be of some help. I mean, if you look at the types of standards, there are different types of standards and there are different groups of standards in each of the fields. So whether it's for a clinical interface or for reference or reporting, when you're giving the rules, the way you want to categorize the information, health information or medical information, you actually need a different set of standards. So all standards are not the same. And even within the same group, if you see, there are more than one standards because the objectives with which the standard developing organization had set forth may have been slightly different. So where does that lead us to? Uh, if you look at the broad categories, and this has already been stressed upon by Honorable Chairman and Mr. Bedi as well, uh, I'm not talking about the identifier standards because they could at most be nation specific. They can't be global, but what we are very concerned about are the global standards. If you want to really have a health information exchange in this global village, we need to be very careful about these things. So the first one is the vocabulary standard. Vocabulary is something very funny. I mean, what is CL larynx to a doctor, maybe laryngeal malignancy to another, or laryngeal carcinoma to another? I mean, the same thing can be said in so many different terms. And all the Clinicians may be understanding it, but anywhere in between where the message is being standard, is being transferred, it may be ambiguous. So vocabulary is definitely the major area. The next part is the content exchange. I mean, what content we are exchanging? It's very important to know what we are exchanging. Often, as you say, we may have institutional codes. Say we categorize male as zero and female as one sent to another institute, another hospital, where it's just the opposite. So where male is one and female is zero. There could be another group where there's a third gender. We simply cannot exchange this content as it is. Next is the transport, and the fourth is the privacy, security, confidentiality. I won't deal much about those, but as you have already been told, there are issues related to that. So. If you look at the common vocabulary standards, these are the controlled medical vocabulary, and there are, again, quite a lot of them. The WHO has the stable of ICD standards, and uh, in fact, we are progressing so fast, ICD-11 is also just around the corner. It's expected by the end of the year. So I think from 1st October, the US is moving to ICD-10, but by December, ICD-11 will be available. So ICD-9 is way behind, it's historic. And why has there been a new addition? Because there were some shortcomings which couldn't be addressed by those. Incidentally, ICD-11 will be one-to-one -one mappable with SNOMED City on LOINC. In fact, SNOMED City and LOINC would be one-to-one -one mappable, SNOMED City and ICD-11 would be one-to-one -one mappable. So in a way, maybe in a couple of years, we'll have more harmonization. SNOMED City, we have two eminent speakers here, Dr. Karan Veer Singh and Mr. Gaur Sundar, who would be dealing with different aspects of SNOMED City, so I don't have to say anything on that. Next part is the content exchange standard. And here again, the two most well-known standards are HL7 and DICOM. Now, HL7 started with, there was no version one, but the version two was there. That started way back in 87. Then the version three came, in European countries, version 3 is more popular, whereas US or Australia prefer the version 2. 2.8 is round the corner. But HL7 also realized that these are not serving the purposes that it was meant for. So they have come up with a new concept. It's a new look strategy. They call it FIRE. What is FIRE? I'll come into that. They're not calling it HL7 V4.0. But in a way, it is. I'll talk more about it later. The other one is DICOM. I think all in imaging are very familiar with it. Uh, in the transport standards, I think SOAP and XML, these are the well-known ones. 
security also, as I said, I won't go into it. But I'll talk about this content exchange standard a bit more. Uh, I hope Dr. Chandil won't mind. In fact, <laughs> he has been, uh, uh, in fact, HL7 India didn't start very long ago. Initially, it started in somewhere in 2000, but it was almost dormant for 10 years. Then uh, I became the second chairman of HL7 India. Then Dr. Lavanian came, and I, Dr. Chandil is there now. So we have tried to move HL7 India forward. HL7 headquarters, international, is doing a great. Uh, if you look at HL7 version 2, v2.x, so that was mostly in the communication layer. So you had the interaction and message models. So HL7 v2 was dealing with message models. When version 3 came, that was in the objects layer or the information model. So you have the RIM, the reference information model, and the document, that is the clinical document architecture, CDA. What is FIRE doing? FIRE is an acronym for Fast Health Interoperable Resources. So it is actually going in the SOA domain. It's a service-oriented architecture. You have got small building blocks. You pick and choose. So whether you want to use a particular thing, use only that. You need not go into the very extensive version 3 CD if you go into it. It's a very extensive module. But FIRE, they're trying to break that. So you pick and choose your modules. And then you use only that much which is essential for your purpose of health information exchange. Uh, DICOM, again, I don't have to say anything about it. Now, one thing which is there, I mean, which I talked just now, so before I end, I need to stress on this. Now, suppose there are different standards. Let's take the common level used ones, well-known ones, HL7 and DICOM. Now, HL7 is communicating between the HIS and RIS, RIS, because HL7 deals with the clinical and administrative data, which you get in the hospital information system. If you give an order for some imaging, it will go to the RIS, or radiology information system. DICOM, on the other hand, will be communicating between RIS and PACS for images. So you have a picture archiving and communication system. There, DICOM will work. If you look at this, these two standards operate at different levels. And obviously, they don't talk to each other. So if you need to have a communication, if you need to have seamless exchange of information, you need a broker. So. One of the players in this field is IHA, Integrated Health Enterprise. So they have scheduled workflow, I mean, for radiology, the example I'm giving. So that will integrate this ordering, scheduling, imaging, acquisition, storage, and viewing activities associated with radiology exams. So once you are using this scheduled workflow for this radiology, then you can use HL7, DICOM, without having to think over it. I mean, how do I make them talk to each other? So this is just one of the examples, and there are various such efforts going on globally. India is a new player in the field, but definitely we are trying to learn from the other's mistakes rather than repeating those ourselves. So this is the IHE website, and that brings to the end of my slides.